I've been making different kinds of outdoor art and installation art around the city of Detroit for a few years now. I wanted to use some of the empty window spaces in abandoned buildings. With the first portrait installation, there are nine foot by seven foot portraits. And these were put in the building's 16 empty window spaces in 2014. I worked with the nonprofit art group Cade to put together a list of different people. The main idea, it was to show leaders and activists who struggled for their fellow inhabitants. There are names of people that everyone knows, but fewer are able to put a face with a name. This painting series, it tries to fill that gap and make the story of Detroit more complete. The second installation of the series focused on poets and minority publishers. This installation is on Trumbull in the Woodbridge neighborhood by Wayne State University. Poetry and publishing wasn't actually a subject I knew very much about. And because so many of the people in the series are working and living in the area, I was able to meet a lot of them and take pictures of them to use for the paintings. And this is a big difference from the current series that I'm now working on. This is an area now that is totally erased. The theme of the new installation will be the Black Bottom neighborhood and Paradise Valley Entertainment District. From around the 1920s to the 1960s, it was one of the only places actually that black people could live in Southeast Michigan and own businesses. I'm painting people that grew up in this neighborhood, like Joe Lewis, and then trained here and got his start. Longtime mayor of Detroit, Coleman Young, and human rights activist, Ron Scott. The commercial district for Black Bottom was an area known as Paradise Valley. Paradise Valley ran along Hastings Street, mainly north and south. My father was Joe Von Battle, and he had a record store on Hastings Street that he opened in 1945. And he set up a, a recording studio in the back of the record shop. He recorded John Lee Hooker. He also recorded all of the sermons and songs of the Reverend C.L. Franklin. He recorded his daughter, Aretha. Hastings Street was an extremely teeming and vibrant place. As a little bitty girl, I was over on Hastings Street uh, at my dad's record shop all the time. But we, being little kids, weren't allowed to venture very far away from just the front of the shop. But even from there, you understood how vibrant the street was. So it was a street of great uh, businesses, jazz music, some blues music, stores, shops, bars, uh, all kinds of commercial enterprises. And some people lived on Hastings Street, particularly in apartments that were above the commercial structures. Okay, the real significance of Nicole's project is to display these portraits of particularly mid-century African Americans. And it is so significant because there is such a tendency to render the people who were here in this city during that time as invisible, particularly African Americans. And I think that's what makes it very, very important. Uh, that there was, in fact, a very vibrant, a very um, dynamic uh, history that was taking place during those years of the mid-century of Detroit. The only person in the series I am painting who I knew was the activist Ron Scott. Ron co-founded the Black Panthers in Detroit, and in the 1970s, he was the spokesperson for the Coalition Against Police Brutality. The coalition put a lot of pressure on the police to reform, and the group still works today in the city. The only painting in the series where there are two people on a panel together is the painting of Aretha Franklin and her father, who was a really influential minister, C.L. Franklin. He was known to have a million dollar voice, and he led the new Bethel Baptist Church, which first started on Hastings Street. I like putting art outside because hopefully it has a chance to reach everybody.
I also really like making art that's about the city and about the history of the place and then putting it on the streets. The whole Detroit Portrait Series has been going for about three years. They're unfamiliar with who the faces are, but when I tell them their names, the light bulb goes off. Here is a mural by another Detroit Performs artist, Tylon Sawyer. 